made a lot of money back then. It was, but I uh, enjoyed it tremendously. But the, with the hockey, it was just filling in whenever they didn't have somebody. So you, you said you were trying out for the Olympics, um, and you said in the 70s. Um, I was born in 83, and if I had a time machine to go back in time, the, the number one sporting event, Mr. Gray, that I would have gone back to would have been the Lake Placid game. I think by yeah. far that is the greatest sports moment, I think, that I've ever seen to this point. Um, I really honestly believe that that is the greatest upset to this day because we were not supposed to beat them. They had beat us, you know, in a preliminary game earlier before the Olympics had started at Madison Square Garden. They embarrassed us. Um, they embarrassed the NHL All-Stars at that time. I mean, those were professional players. Again, they played against amateur hockey because, like you said, you weren't allowed to be a professional. They changed that now. But, uh, you know, to me, I, I've, I've watched that game numerous times over and over again and still can't believe the outcome. But, again, if I was alive, if I had a time machine to go back, I would definitely want to be back to watch that um, in person. Uh, everyone that I've talked to that either watched the game – said that they had never seen anything anything like it. I mean, do, do you agree with that? Was there – I mean, you got a chance to watch yeah, it. You know, you, yeah, I, I use that uh, whole moment for other things that a lot of people don't see. I, You know, I wish I had a longer career. I wish I was able to live my life for 20 years playing professional sports, but that wasn't in God. It was in God's hands. That didn't happen. Yeah. But uh, some of your best coaches and your best teachers come out of moments like that, and I consider myself a really good teacher of, of the game and, uh, and pretty much any sport I get into, I, I try and be the smartest player in the field. It isn't about being the most talented, and, and Brooks was ahead of his time, and I'll probably say this to you, and you'll go back and watch the, the movie they made. Obviously, it doesn't show everything, Terrible. but he was ahead of his time. Um, he's teaching hockey the way it was taught today, speed. And that's why we beat the Russians. We changed the game. If you look at the video, they touched on it a little bit, the movie where he didn't hire the, the he didn't uh, bring the bruisers in. He didn't bring some of his own team in, which was a national champion. He went for speed. He knew that the Russians were not fast. And that's kind of the way the game is today. You hear younger, faster. He went with younger, faster in the 70s and 80s. And uh, that was unheard of back then. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with you on that. I mean, again, if if you watch, I've seen the movie numerous times too. It actually is my favorite Disney movie, the favorite real Disney movie, not animated. Um, but I remember him you, speaking of Herb Brooks. He mentioned in the movie that he had already, before they had brought all the kids to tryouts, he had already picked the guys he wanted. He didn't even have to see them. He already knew who he wanted going into right. it. And, you know, they said, well, wait a minute. You know, we, we brought these kids. We paid for the, you know, three-day tryout. He goes, well, you can try them out as much as you want. Here's the list of guys I want, and this is the guys I know that we could be successful. And, again, you know, in the beginning, you know, they weren't – I think he pushed them in a way to make them gel better together as a team. I think in the beginning they were still – Oh, I play for University of Boston, or I play for University of North Dakota. It wasn't until midway through that he got them to say, "Okay, the name on the front of the jersey is more better, or should say, should say more better, is more important than the name on the back." So I think what he did is he got them to gel, and they he, they gelled at the right time enough to not only beat the Soviets, but then you know a lot of people still to this day they think that that was the gold medal game. A lot of them don't know they had to beat Finland. <laughs> like, I think it was two days later that they had to beat Finland for the gold. So a lot of people don't. And in every game that they played in that Olympics, they had to come from behind. So they were one of those teams that got behind but was able to come from behind and win. So, yeah, I, I still to this day think that that was, you know, it's just the funny thing about you know, Kurt, Coach Brooks is he didn't live to see that movie. But the cool thing at the end of the movie, if you watch it, he didn't need to see it. He lived it. So he knew yeah. he lived. It. So he didn't need to be here to see the, the movie being made. He lived it. So 
Um, yeah, by far that 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 is the coolest sports moment that I think so far. And again, I'm I just turned 36 uh, about 11 days ago, so I'm still a youngster from a lot of people. But still to this day, it it really is the best sports moment I think I ever have. I think my second moment would be the Ali Foreman fight. Again, that's boxing, so that's a whole different sport. But that would be my second <laughs> uh, second trip back yeah, in time. Just- back in time to see that you were fight. definitely too young for that one yes yeah that was that, a good fight <laughs> that was a good yeah and i've watched that fight numerous times too you know on espn and stuff like that so with the lightning who did you meet so you met brian bradley was did you get to meet uh you know paul eifert did you get to meet any of those guys any of the 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 you know terry chris obviously darren, was coach right darren poopa i, I poopa. see coach okay. crisp on the elevator all the time we just call him coach Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, but a lot of people don't realize he's almost every game, almost every home game. Okay. Uh, with all his other with all his other teams he's coached for, he's at all the Lightning games. So he's still heavily behind the scenes. You know, enjoys being at Lightning games and involved in some some way. Now, were you there last Thursday in person? Yeah, yeah, we were there. Okay. Yeah. So it was that? So it was. Uh... That was a good they, to me so far. What I've seen in the now again, I I, I will go back and look at tonight because I'm doing the podcast. So I can't pay full attention to the TV. But what I've seen in the first three games is I've seen too much defensive time um, for us. I think they spent way too much time in the defensive end, but they've gotten better. And I think you know the guy that needed to stand up and say something did earlier this week. Stamkos, that's why he wears the C. I think he kind of lit a little fire under their butts a little bit and said, okay, guys, you know, we just can't go in every game thinking that we can win. We have a bullseye on our back. We were the best team last year. We had a horrible playoff where we got knocked down the first round by, I still think, an inferior team. Opinion as well, a Lightning fan. Yeah, that's, it was very unfair. But if you, if you look back – Defense wins championships. Obviously, you love sports. Defense right. still will always win championships. Uh, if Greg, right. Craig uh, with the Olympic team back then didn't bail us out on some miraculous saves, we would have never beat Russia. Um, but what, what we got today is the Lightning understand that the only reason they didn't win and keep going on is they didn't have the defensive structure. Now, that also comes down to coaching. Uh, I, I truly believe if he had not signed a contract, Cooper would have been in trouble, even though I love Cooper. Um, but he plays a 1-3-1, one, one. and if you'll note, look at the replays of some of those games against the Blue Jackets, the only person standing in front of the net was Brian McDonough with two people around him, almost yeah. half the game. Um, that's a 1-3-1, one, yeah. one. and they'll talk about running a 1-3. One, it works when you're scoring. When you're not scoring and you're playing playoff hockey, a 1-3-1 one, one doesn't work. You've got to do man-to-man and, 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 and play zone. You just can't do it, and they thought they could, and obviously they couldn't. Um, so hopefully well, I think that's what I've seen them adjusting. They're trying to adjust that when it works and when to collapse down to a man on man. Yeah. Cause obviously that's what John Terrell must've picked up on because obviously he knew how to beat them. I mean, after the first period of game one, they, the whole the rest of the series, other than maybe the third period in game three, they looked lost. I mean, they looked outmatched. Um, and I remember the one, three, one, when they had uh, Guy Boucher, and they, I remember yeah. a game against the Flyers, I think it was the Flyers, that was on national TV, and the crowd in Tampa booed because the Flyers would not bring the puck up the ice. So, and that was back, that was before Marty St. Louis, who was my favorite Lightning player, left and went to New yeah, York. Mark. But, um, you know, that was before then. I did, I did not know that he played a 1-3-1. One, one. I did not know that that's the kind of style that Cooper played. So that's new to me. Yeah, that's, I, I did not know he that. He does. Okay. They play a 1-3-1 one, one a lot, a lot, a lot, okay. a lot. You know, the average person in the stands doesn't even know what it is. And yeah. uh, they get frustrated. But when it works, it's fabulous. It's kind of like the old Tampa 2. When it works, right. it's fabulous. When it doesn't work, you look like idiots. Well, speaking of the Bucks, uh, what's your opinion on them so far this season? Oh. I, uh, when I teach, when I teach private training and I teach kids, 
Marty St. Louis was one of the kids I would tell a soccer player they had to watch. And I said, there's reasons why kids make it successfully in college and in the pros and people and people don't. And when you're trying to make a U17 um, Olympic team or a U17 squad that's nationally ranked, they don't, there's a lot of talent. They're looking for something different than that. And, and I always tell kids, be the smartest person on the field. If I'm teaching a goaltender, I want him to be the smartest goalie in the game. That will right. supersede talent. And I still believe that in any sport, Peyton Manning was the smartest person on the field, probably smarter than any coach when he played. Um, you got uh, Tom Brady. He's playing probably with the smartest coach on the planet, and he emulates that. Um, Drew Bledsoe, smart, smart, smart people. They learn the game. They understand the game. They just do it at a different level, even though they are not the most talented people. And that's what I feel kind of going on with the Bucks. I still believe – uh, quarterbacks should have to sit on a bench for a couple of years and learn from a, a more accomplished quarterback, defensive lineman, the same thing. It used to always be that way. Now it's about how big and fast you are and how we can burn you out in the first two years. And I, right. I'm still not sold on Winston. I'm still not sold. He's the smartest guy in the field. And uh, when he becomes that quarterback, he'll do very well. He has all the skill. You just need to be the smartest guy in the field. Well, the, the, see, and that's the question there is, will that happen in a Buccaneer uniform? Because a lot of people think that if he has a bad season now, I will have to say so far, it's been okay. He's had some, he, for the life of me, and, I, you know, again, I got a chance, I didn't get a chance personally, but I got a chance to watch him on TV in college. You know, he was one of the, you know, uh, most accurate passers at FSU. And I think that's the re- one of the reasons why the Bucks drafted him over Mariota was the reason being is they thought, okay, his accuracy. But then again, as you said, when you make that, that, that move from at, you know, amateurs to pros, everybody's faster, stronger, that accuracy may not be there. And for some off-the-wall reason, from what I've seen the five years he's been quarterback here, is that he makes bonehead moves when you don't need to make he needs to learn how to throw the ball away and play to live another down because he tries to make plays that just are not there and your smart quarterbacks like you mentioned you know tom brady and peyton manning and you know i'll even say drew Brees and you know quarterbacks like that they don't make those dumb mistakes when they just throw the ball away live to play another down you know oh if you got a punt okay well if your defense is playing well, and that's where I think has been so far surprising me this year, has been the strong point for the Bucs, has been the defense. They lost a lot of people, and we haven't even seen Jason Pierre Paul yet. I don't even know if we even see him with that neck injury he suffered during the offseason. But the thing is, with that, you have Shaq Barrett, who I know they're going to try to renegotiate to, to get him signed here. He'll be a nice addition. Vita Vea has been pretty good. After him being hurt coming in during the second half of last season, he's been pretty good this year. I was kind of on the fence when they traded away McCoy, but I guess everything's not so hot now in Carolina. But again, we will see that this upcoming Sunday morning because they'll be in London. Um, But I mean, to me, I think right now the Bucs could easily have beat San Francisco And they could have easily beat the Giants, but they let those games get away. And, again, I'm not going to blame and put the blame on Matt Gay. Rookies make mistakes. That's what he did. He missed those extra points. He missed the field goal. I don't think what I've heard from Bruce Arians over the past few weeks is that that's their kicker. That's their guy. I don't think Bruce is the right coach. He likes to keep his guys here. He likes to believe in what he has. But I don't know how much longer you can do that with a guy like Winston who seems to make mistakes when you need him not to make mistakes. And that's that that right. to me, I don't know how but then here's the here's the fall point. So you let him go. Now who's your starting quarterback? They're gonna put Ryan Griffin in who started not even one game. You're gonna draft a quarterback out of college. Okay, so now you're gonna go back to square one again. So now the Bucks are really in a hard place when it comes to, okay, do we let him go? That's the same way with my vision with the Lightning with John Cooper, and I hate to change sports, but 
I thought last year, after what had happened in the playoffs, and had he not signed his extension, I believe he would.